good to see you all back after a long break and hope all of you are safe at home and uh, your families are safe now uh, i am captain r anand working with hmt for the past 15 years so probably you would have seen couple of my videos earlier so this is one more in such series and in this one uh, i am going to talk to you about how to calculate the gz values right so that is the topic for the day and once again uh, i welcome all to go through this session give your comments so that we can take it further from here right let's start off with the topic for the day use of kn as a tool for calculating the gz that's what is the topic for the day let's go through that one by one so in this one we are going to understand what is cross curves of stability which is normally given for some assumed kg what is the need for having a kn value which is for a kg taken for zero the previous one was taken with some assumed kg for preparations the second one is kn taken with an assumed kg of zero and based on these two understand the procedure for calculating the writing levers this is what we are going to uh, see in this short uh, session for today right first of all just to give you an idea what is writing levers so as you see here uh a ship when it is upright the force of gravity and buoyancy are on a single straight line they are at a state of equilibrium but when the vessel inclines due to an external force these two forces get separated by a certain distance and this couple which is going to determine whether your ship is going to come back upright or not this couple depends on what is the separation between the two forces the force of gravity as well as buoyancy so larger this separation better will be your ability to come back to the upright condition so what is gz all that we'll be uh, dealing with in a completely different session but here the point is how we are going to calculate it right so the lever separating the force of gravity and buoyancy is gz and the force is acting through it is equal to its displacement as weight as well as buoyant force the moment created is gz into the displacement gz is the lever and displacement is the force which is acting through either buoyancy or gravity and in this case since the couple is anti uh, acting anti clockwise so the buoyant force acting downward sorry there is a force of gravity acting downwards buoyancy upwards is creating a couple which is anti clockwise hence it is called writing moment so the writing moment is g is equal to w and the unit for that is normally what we use is preferred unit is ton meter right what is this cross curves of stability which we are going to use for calculating the writing lever gz of your vessel in the present condition gz is a function of kg raft now remember gz was formed due to this movement of center of buoyancy away from the center line and that depends on your underwater shape so it is specific to your vessel and that too for a specific draft accordingly the underwater shape will change and of course theta the angle of heel the inclination due to an external force and when we are going to study the ship's behavior we are going to see over a large angle of theta for a range of angle of heel for the sake of convenience the shipyard uses displacement instead of draft in salt water for the prime reason being most of your calculations which are going to be there for uh, understanding the stability condition of your vessel during your voyage will all be based on uh, salt water density of 1.025 tons per cubic meters so that is why instead of using draft then you 
you have to take into account what density. So rather, since we are interested in the final calculations for salt water, we use directly displacement instead of draft. So the variables, variables therefore are the angle of heel, which we are going to study over a wide range, the displacement in salt water, and the kg of your ship. Now, theta, we can fix various angles of heel for which we are interested in calculating. Displacement for various displacements we can calculate. But every voyage, what is going to be a widely fluctuating thing is the kg of your vessel. So that is what is going to fluctuate wildly. So this is a big factor which is going to influence your GZ. Based on the shipyard, what they have done is they have taken a certain fixed kg and they have calculated. But it doesn't mean that we are going to always sail out with that. So that, that is a factor which we need to deal with later. First, let's see what the shipyard gives you. They take for a fixed value of kg. Based on their calculation, the shipyard constructs a graph with gz along the y-axis and displacement along the x-axis. So these are the two uh, items which are going to create the table for us. Now, whether we call it table or curves, the uh, idea is the same, to get the values of the assumed gz. In earlier days, they preferred curves because they didn't have calculators in those days. So for them to interpolate and get intermediate values was a very difficult task. So they preferred using curves. Whereas nowadays with uh, uh, calculators, computers, uh, for us, table form is always better. In earlier times, they used to prefer curves. And these curves were drawn for various angles of field, 5, 10, 15, 20. And if you see here, they are not all equally spaced. They are for certain angles which are preferred for us to understand the ship's stability. So it is for certain values of heel, preferred values of heel, not equally spaced values. These curves, once it's done in a table, uh, these curves when they are drawn, the curve for, for example, 45 degrees and 60 degrees and 75 degrees, at uh, various displacements, they used to intersect each other. So hence that uh, interesting term, cross curves, because the curves were crossing each other. That stuck onto it. The graph is constructed for an assumed value of kg, which is very clearly stated. Because unless you know that, you cannot find out what is your present gz for the present kg. Right. Now what you have here is, let us take an assumption. Let assumed kg for which the shipyard has created, let it be 6 meters for which they have created the curve. And this is what will be given in your hydrostatic particulars. But let's say my present kg is not 6 meters, but 6.8. This is what is my actual departure kg. Now. If you see here, what the shipyard has given in the table is this as GZ. But based on my present kg of 6.8, can you see from the diagram that this is my GZ, which I have just named it as G dash Z dash. So GZ is what is given by the shipyard, whereas G dash Z dash is what is my present actual writing lever, which is what I am interested in knowing. So how to get this G dash Z dash from the shipyard given GZ? That is what we are going to find next. Right. So. Whatever is this triangle form here,
I'm just enlarging it in the next figure. Understood? This, of course, is the transverse meta center. Right. The dotted line in red, which is the GZ given by the shipyard, based on an assumed kg of 6 meters. Whereas the present GZ is G dash Z dash. Now, the theta, what I've marked here, both on top as well as here, that is the angle of heel for which you are doing the calculation for, uh, for this particular condition. So, if you find that this angle is theta, which is the angle of heel, then what I am doing to be able to calculate this g dash z dash, I am dropping this perpendicular here from g dash to the uh, assumed g z which we have calculated, which the shipyard is giving to us. Right? Now, this g dash to x, that vertical line, leads us to the next thing that. Because being corresponding angles, this angle is also equal to theta, which is the angle of heel. Right? So, I am only now going to concentrate on this triangle, G dash, G and X. Just look at this figure. I am interested in knowing this value, but I have only this value given to be my, my shipyard. So, how to get G dash, Z dash from the original G Z? Now, for that only I have drawn this triangle from the original GZ which is given to you. If I somehow manage to find out this GX and I subtract it from the original GZ, will I not get this value X to Z which is the same as G dash Z dash? So that is my intention. So let's see towards that what we are going to do. Now, in this triangle G, G dash X, the angle at G dash is theta. So sine theta is going to be opposite by hypotenuse which is gx divided by gz dash because this angle is 90. Now, when I cross multiply what we have is gx is given by gz dash into sine theta. Sign, I told you the various angles of heel which we are going to get the uh, values and then correct it to get our present GZ. What is GG dash? Simply put, it is the difference between the assumed kg for which the shipyard has given you all the details and the present kg, which is my actual departure kg. So, in this case, in this example which we looked at, can I say GG dash will be 0.8 meters? Right? So you get gg dash is going to remain 0.8 and theta for various angles I am going to calculate like 5, 10, 15, 20. We saw those uh, values which, they have, uh, which the shipyard has given. So we are going to correct each of those. Thus, from this diagram, if I am interested in getting gg dash, uh, g dash, z dash, I am going to subtract this correction gg dash sin theta now what happens if let's say the assumed kg remained 6 meters but my present departure kg is let's say 5.5 meters that means the present kg is lower than the assumed kg in that case what happens if the present kg is less than this imaginary kg of 6 meters, then the correction will be opposite. Why? Because the present gz will be below the imaginary gz, so it will be 
uh, greater in value. So the correction has to be added. That's all is the difference. Now, this used to create a lot of doubt in the mind of people who used to calculate those days. So they had a lot of difficulty in understanding where to put plus, where to put minus. So they wanted to do away with either of these possibilities, sometimes plus, sometimes minus. So what was the solution for it? They had assumed instead of 6 meters, let's, let's assume the kg is 0. Ultimately, the assumed GZ can be for an imaginary uh, kg of 0 also, is it not? So let assumed kg of the vessel be 0 meters for which GZ is calculated and given in tables or by graph as usual in the hydrostatic particular. This is what we call either KN curves or KN tables. Now, KN is given to you in your hydrostatic particulars by the shipyard. Whereas, my present kg is 6.8, how am I going to get this GZ from the KN values given here? Just like how we have done earlier. I'm just enlarging that triangle. Now, instead of assume GZ, we call it call this assume GZ as KN. Remember, the G now coincides, the assumed G is at the keel level. So, instead of calling the assumed GZ, I now call it by a new name, KN. For the simple reason, they want to convey that it is all calculated for an assumed KG of 0. Now, comes the calculation part. Very similar way. Uh, corresponding angles, theta. So I'm looking at this triangle K G dash X. So if I subtract KX from the assumed uh, values which I got KN values, I will be able to get G dash Z dash. The advantage here is since my present KG is always going to be greater than zero, the correction KX, which in other words, boils down to kg sin kg dash sin theta this is always going to be remaining negative that is kn minus kg dash sin theta will give me my corrected g dash z dash so this is how we are going to eliminate the need for sometimes making the correction plus sometimes minus by Taking this assumed GZ for a kg of 0 and call it KN. I hope this gives you a fair idea regarding how this GZ for the present voyage prior departure is always calculated. What I have shown is just a sample value. As various angles of heel, if you see phi as 0 degrees, obviously 0 degrees is also essential. But generally when you when the ship is upright, the GZ is always 0. Unless, of course, uh, your ship is already having a list. In that case, it may not uh, be 0. But otherwise, if not, your GZ for 0 degrees will automatically be 0. Because a ship upright doesn't have any writing lever. So 0, 5, 10, 15. Then you see the spacing changes, 20, 30, 40. Sometimes from 40, they give 45 and then straight away 60. So it depends on your uh, ship's hydrostatic particulars, what all values they have given to you. This is what you are going to pick for various angles of heat, the Kn values from your hydrostatic particulars. Kg. And one thing which I forgot to mention here is, the Kg which you use here is your present departure Kg and it has to be kg fluid. In other words, your present kg plus the free surface correction. That is what is called kg fluid. We are supposed to use the kg fluid for our gz calculations. So kg sin theta is the correction which we are going to apply. So my present departure gz is going to be kn 
minus kg sin theta is what is going to give you g is there. And you may notice that for very large angles of keel, the writing lever is negative. That means you have already crossed uh, uh, the uh, point where uh, the gz will uh, go back to zero. So as you can see, somewhere between 70 degrees and 80 degrees, the gz would have become zero. Now, uh, it, it's a very large angle of field for which uh, we don't worry too much. What we are going to worry is normally what are the gz values generally up to 40 degrees. That is what is going to determine the stability of my ship. Because in general, uh, when we are talking about stability for maximum possible role which we have, again, depends on different types of ship. Generally, for, for, for bad weather ships, roll between 30 to 40 degrees. So that is why we are interested in the uh, values which are normally up to 40 degrees. Once we get all these values of GZ, we are going to plot them on the curve. So based on whatever we got, the curve looks like this. And as I had told you earlier, most of my interest will lie on this value of gz. This part of the curve up to 40 degrees in general. This, this particular angle, we call it angle of vanishing stability. So this whole exercise what we have done is to get this GZ values plotted and then verify the compliance with the intact stability criteria. Right. Fine. Right. That brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. In case of any doubts, clarification, please drop it in the same comments section of this post so that we can get back to you. In case of any feedback, you can always reach us at efeedback at hntmarine.com. Once again, wishing you all to stay safe, have a safe sailing, and have a good day. Thank you. Right. I hope to see you again soon with one more interesting video. So, so that this, this uh, interaction between us can continue for a uh, more time. Yes. So thank you very much.